Welcome Adventure Ed is in the house. I'm just kidding, I'm not in the house. I'm actually in Australia, as you can see from these eucalyptus leaves. I'm just kidding, I'm not in Australia either. I'm actually in a riparian forest in Southern California. Um, but there are eucalyptus trees which are non-native to Southern California, which is why if I told you I was in Australia, you might believe me. But anyway, I was at work, I just got out of work. Um, I'm in Northern San Diego County and uh, I figured I would just whip out the camera and just film this video because I had someone message me on Instagram earlier today, I was a college kid. He was asking, you know, what are some things to prepare for a career in wildlife biology that, you know, no one ever really talks about and I've actually thought about this before, and just to give you some background info on myself, um, my name's Eddie, and I actually work as a wildlife biologist and environmental consulting, and it seems like half the comments I get on all my videos are just questions about careers in wildlife biology. I know that this video might be boring for a lot of people, but if you're interested in becoming a wildlife biologist someday, I'm gonna share with you some really important tips in this video. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to prepare for a career in wildlife biology that you know, not that many people ever really talk about. So some of these things are pretty simple. Some of them are a little bit more complicated, um, but the first one is pretty simple. The first thing you should do to prepare is get used to getting out of bed early. For many jobs in wildlife biology, wildlife is pretty active early in the morning. Birds, for example, are really active early in the morning, and you just have to get used to getting up really, really early sometimes. Like I've had jobs where I have to get up at like three or four in the morning because I have to drive far to a field site. Um, a lot of jobs in field biology are, especially in environmental consulting, um, which is a lot of jobs in the country now, they're connected to the construction industry, and uh, the construction industry generally, generally starts um, really early in the morning. So. You know, I was never a morning person in high school and college. I used to sleep in as long as I could, but uh, you know, I've just kind of trained myself to be able to wake up early in the morning. And to be honest, I'm still not the greatest at getting up early. Yeah, that's just something you gotta get used to if you're not a morning person. Uh, my second tip is to get really good at just like paying attention to small details while you're entering in data and entering in numbers and get used to double checking everything. Now, this is some general advice that can help you in school, can help you in many different careers, but the thing about wildlife biology or environmental science or whatever is a lot of times you're out in the field and there's all of these extra variables affecting your focus, you know, like you're you're looking at everything around you, you might be tired, you know, there's a lot of phys a lot of times the job requires physical activity and it can be pretty easy to kind of not focus as hard on entering the data when you're in the field and you can make mistakes and a lot of times you know you're gonna fix those mistakes when you go back to the lab or when you they call it QA QCing where you know you go through all the data that you entered and you know you correct it make sure it's all entered in properly the better you complete your data in the field the better that you enter in your data in the field, the easier it's gonna be later on to correct that data, make sense of that data for whatever you're doing with that data afterwards. This can be applied to many different careers, whether you're, you know, especially in science, whether you're working in a lab or, or you know, maybe you're doing computer programming or whatever, but in many different careers, details matter. But especially in wildlife biology, I feel like it is really easy just to kind of you know, not really focus as hard while entering data in while you're in the field. Just really try to focus on, you know, doing everything correct while you're in the field. Now, my next tip that many wildlife biologists will probably never tell you is to try to stay in as best of shape as you can because there's actually many wildlife jobs, many wildlife field technician jobs, which actually require you to do a lot of physical activity. And I'm not saying you have to be a really good athlete or anything, but you know, a lot of times, like if you have to hike like four miles, like on like pretty like rough terrain, to, uh, you know, to do field work in a day, that's not something that everyone can do easily. And the more easy the physical part of the field work is for you, 
the less likely you are to make mistakes while you're entering data and you know just doing the job overall stay in good enough shape to you know do some reasonably rigorous uh, field work activity because it's just gonna make it so much easier for you and by the way in case you guys are wondering why do I have on this vest um, well at work I was just at uh, I was just doing my field work near a construction site and they make you wear you know all the equipment it's just the rules anyway my next tip is to start thinking more like a scientist when you're out in the field for example like you should be paying attention instead of just going out there doing the field work taking the data you really should be paying attention to your surroundings and you should be trying to make sense of why things are the way they are now that sounds really vague but if there's like some significant change in your surroundings uh you really should try to notice that because that could be pretty important for you know the outcome of whatever whatever conclusions you draw of whatever scientific experiment you're running or whatever environmental report or whatever you're doing out there um, the whole point of your study the whole point of your field work um, might be affected if there's some big change uh, in the environment going on or even just a little change for example um, I work in the environmental consulting industry. One thing that I do is I keep track of how uh, this construction project impacts um, the activity of nesting birds. So let's say there's a red-tailed hawk that is nesting uh, right near uh, a construction site. And let's say that construction starts near the hawk nest and uh, the hawk abandons its nest. I mean, my first intuition is, oh, the construction uh, you know the noise or activity of the construction or whatever was what caused the hawk to leave But however if I pay close attention and, and I look more closely and I see that there might be another external factor Impacting the situation for example, let's say there was a whole group of ravens that came in and were mobbing and attacking the hawk While it was nesting there at the same time. Well, maybe that might have been the reason why uh, the hawk might have abandoned its nest because I mean, ravens are known to actually bully uh, larger birds of prey, and uh, they can actually force them to abandon their nests. You know, that would affect the conclusion of what I was studying there. So, you know, just pay close attention to all your surroundings. And the other thing too is, if you wanna work your way up on the ladder, let's say, you know, whether you're trying to get a good job as a professor, or, and you're trying to impress your graduate advisor, or if you're in the private industry like me and you're trying to work your way up to, you know, uh, the higher project manager positions, um, you know, instead of just crossing off the X's and O's and just doing your job, you know, if when you're talking to your boss, if, you know, you mention things that you notice in the field and you, you show that you're thinking about this in more of a high level way, it just makes you look better. It makes you look more intellectual makes you look more intelligent makes you look like you really know what you're doing as a scientist in the field and you're not just a robot you know carrying out you know the basic tasks that are in front of you so definitely be thinking of all your surroundings and you know when you talk with your co-workers and the people who are directing you above you um, you know share your thoughts with them now my next tip is something that maybe a lot of people have mentioned before but I'm just gonna say it again because I really think that it is really important is you should do everything you can to be the best recreational naturalist that you can when you know the natural world when you know how to identify things in the field when you know a bit about their natural history how all the species in your surrounding ecosystem you know are impacting each other are affecting each other it just really helps you overall with any job in ecology it kind of makes you look better definitely you know for example if part of your job is to identify birds and you show your boss that not only are you really good at identifying all the birds um, but you also know something about their natural history it just kind of gives you more credibility when you're doing your work it's also important just to know like if you know stuff about their natural history then it really just kind of allows you to do your job better. It allows you to think more actively and think more critically and creatively. Yeah, it's just really important just to be an all around naturalist in your free time, you know, learn the names of things, learn the names of the birds, of the plants. Um, and I guess this leads me to my next tip, which is if you're looking for a job in a specific area, 
a lot of places have requirements for experience with a specific species. You know, it might be a sensitive species that requires um, a special permit to survey. So, you know, in California, for example, there's lots of employers that are looking for people with experience um, and permits for a California gnatcatcher, least bells vireo, and a number of other sensitive species that um, you need either experience or a special permit to work with. So really pay attention to what permits are required to survey different kinds of species and you know what jobs are looking for when it comes to those specific credentials. And if you, if you can get experience doing those, then that'll really help your resume. And my last tip is something that is pretty simple, but it's something that not that many people in wildlife biology ever mention before you actually start looking for jobs. Make sure that you have a driver's license and make sure that you have a clean driving record. All right, sorry, as you can see, I moved places because I thought that I heard a yellow-breasted chat and I went looking for it when on like a half an hour a wild chat chase looking for a yellow-breasted chat. Really beautiful bird. Would have been the first time I saw it this year. Um, didn't find it though, but anyway, um, I was almost done with the video. Now I gotta, uh, gotta remember where I was. Oh yeah, make sure that you have a clean driving record and just make sure that you're overall just like good at like, you know, watching your car and maintaining your car. Make sure that you know how to put on a spare tire. You know, you might have to drive your car a lot for uh, your wildlife biology job. Um, chances are pretty high actually, um, either your car or a company car. And many companies require that you have a clean driving record. I've heard of some people getting screwed out of a job because they didn't have a clean driving record and you know, they just had like a, a couple speeding tickets or something. Sorry, there's birds all around me. Anyway, you wanna make sure that does not happen to you. A lot of times you might be off-roading, you might be on brutal roads where you might get a flat tire. So just make sure you're prepared for anything. Anyways, guys, that's all I had for today. As you can see, this is a pretty low production quality video. I just kind of whipped out my phone and uh, told you guys whatever came to my mind on this subject. But yeah, if you guys have any other questions, let me know in the comments. Again, this video is really for people who are looking to do a career in wildlife biology. I know that I have lots of people out there who are not looking to be a biologist, but are just birders or recreational naturalists. Um, but I got more birding videos coming out, more herping videos coming out, more general nature videos coming out. So. Uh, stay tuned. Um, I'm just trying to get more content out there. Um, and again, if you guys have any questions about anything, let me know in the comments. Thank you.